You're watching free content from Digital Tutors, the world's largest CG training library. Enjoy the tutorial and visit digitaltutors.com to find thousands of videos streaming in HD. We'll begin the texturing process by working on the character's vest. So the character that we're going to be texturing is this female hero character. And so if you want to actually load this up from your project files, it's going to be the soldier girl model final. Uh, this is also the end result of the uh, modeling a female hero in ZBrush and Maya. So if you've gone through that course, uh, the, you can just use the end result that you have, even if it looks a bit different, that's totally fine. Um, otherwise, you can use the project file uh, if you like to. Um, so if you haven't gone through that and you'd like to, uh, then go ahead and go through that and come back here and, and catch up with us. Otherwise, let's uh, go ahead and get started. So we want to add a little bit of color and texture to this. And because the uh, texturing process and the sculpting process here at such high resolutions is is kind of uh, overlaps a bit that we will actually be adding a little bit of sculpted detail in here but our main purpose is to really just add the color and texture detail and the materials uh, to our actual pieces so let's go ahead and select the vest we'll just alt click on it and let's go ahead and jump down here and you can see I have the vest selected and I'm going to go ahead and hit the visibility, turn on the trim and the zipper, okay? And so we want to have these three turned on here, okay? So to add a simple material, for instance, on the zipper, all we have to do is go into our materials and we can find one that we like. We can try one of these metallic looking uh, materials. You can see the preview changing up right above the mouse here. And so I'll just go ahead and click on this. And you can see how it applies it to everything. That's because we don't have any materials currently assigned uh, to our the different pieces of our model. So on the zipper, we've got that selected, that subtool. I'm going to make sure I've got the material channel selected. And let's go to color. And let's go ahead and fill object. All right, now when we go back and select a different material, that zipper is filled with that particular material. Okay. Now, when we start to get into more custom materials, we'll actually save those out. And it's going to be a little bit uh, different because it actually looks at the material slot for uh, the material assignment. And so we can save those out, but you may want to, you may have to come in in certain instances if you're working with the project files and reassign those materials. They may be in a different spot, but we'll show you how to save those out um, so that they come in with your uh, startup materials. Okay. But for now, we're just kind of using that metal material for the zipper. For the trim, we want this to be kind of an orange. And let's go ahead and actually look at our image here. And so this is kind of what we're basing this off of, the, the scheme. So we've got this sort of uh, shiny kind of material with kind of a blue-green specular on it. We'll add a little bit more detail to this sleeve. And then this vest, I want to make a little bit more leather-like. But still, you can see kind of the color scheme that we're going for. Okay, so that trim is kind of orange or yellow. And so I'm going to go ahead and select either this reflect orange or reflect yellow. Okay. And with that vest trim selected still with material active and the color chosen, we can go ahead and let's fill the object. Okay. Maybe that might be a little bit too dark. And so we can choose a different color. Maybe something like that. And go ahead and fill that again. And we want to make sure that if we're uh, actually filling it with color, we want to make sure that we have MRGB on before we do that. There we go. So that mutes it a little bit. And now we can go back to our basic uh, material here. So for the vest itself, I want to go ahead and create a, a material. And I want to base it off of this basic material too. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say copy material. And then I'm going to go to a slot that I'm, I'm not going to use. So let's say this uh, spherical intensity. And then I'll go ahead and paste the material in. And let's go ahead and save it. So I'm going to save this in our ZTools folder as vest material. All right, we can go ahead and bring in our material palette and we can start to modify this. So I want to get the specular fixed up the way that I want. So under the specular 
little thumbnail down here. I want to put in sort of a blue green color, maybe something like that. Okay. And I want to take the specularity and let's go ahead and take this curve out a little bit. Okay. And I also want to colorize the uh, specular. So right in here under colorize specular, go ahead and take that up a bit. You can see how it's starting to colorize that. Okay, we can always modify this later, but I just want to sort of start out that way. Okay, so now what we can do is start to add some detail to this, some color. And so I know I want the vest to be sort of black, so I'm going to start with kind of a gray. And let's go ahead and fill it, and now we can just start to fill it with this. Uh, we need to make sure it's filled with the material too. So we'll go ahead and fill it, and then we can go ahead and paint. So now it's got that gray base. Let's go ahead and get kind of a darker gray. And I'm going to use the, just a standard brush, but I want to use the color spray because I want to get some variation in the color that I'm painting. So there's a little bit of variation in there. And then I'm going to come in and get some uh, one of these alphas. And you could get something like this. Um, you can get, I just want something that was is sort of going to break things up a little bit. And you can see that I'm actually still on Ziad, so I'll take that off. And then I'll just come in here and start to paint across this. And you can see how it's using not only the alpha, but also it's varying the color that I'm painting. And so we've got that gray base, but we're also coming in and now adding this black and then some variation on that black. And so I'm just going to kind of come across here and cover things up. Okay, I'm not being too cautious about it. It gives you some nice variation in here to get sort of a more natural look. Okay, so just kind of painting through this on the for the base here. Okay, kind of darken it up and if you want to change that and make it even a bit darker or maybe even add a little bit more color into it, you could do that. Okay, if you want a, a kind of a smaller scale to it, you can come in here with a smaller brush and just do the same thing. You can see how that sort of grain looks a bit smaller coming in here and doing that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just paint the rest of this with the same brush real quickly. All right, now I also want to start to add some sort of wrinkling across here. So I'm going to use, start out with the drag rectangle and let's use maybe one of these alphas here. So either this one, or we could come in and just use this one. And I want to actually use Z subtract. And you can see how it really cuts it in, so I want to take the intensity way down. And so you can see I can sort of drag these across to get those little wrinkles. Okay, um, I'm going to also go ahead and try to use the color spray. And so what that will do is allow us to just kind of get those random rotations of that to get us those kind of crosshatched little wrinkles in here that gives us that kind of a, a leathery sort of a look. And you can see how it just sort of breaks up that specular and really gives us a nice sort of organic leather kind of a look there. So I'll just kind of bring this in. Again, I don't want to be, you know, don't go too crazy with it. Okay. And we've got symmetry on. If you want to make it really custom, you can just turn that off. It just means you'll have to go around the other side. But it will help you if you've got any, you know, major details that you're painting. It'll make it look a little bit better if it's asymmetrical. Okay. So coming in here and just sort of sculpting those wrinkles in, maybe some finer wrinkles up here, and coming in here and adding those in. Okay, now I also want to change the color. Let me go ahead and just add a few wrinkles. You can see those raised areas that we've, uh, that we've created on the vest. This piece coming into over here, and we want that to be more of a, a gray, uh, still the same material but we want it to be more of a like a gray and so all we'll do is go ahead and change back to our freehand stroke 
Let's take our alpha off and I'll choose kind of a lighter color here. And I just want to now paint using uh, RGB. And now I can come in and just paint through this. Okay, and also all we want to do is come in and paint over what we've got here. Now if you've added that detail and you find that on these areas where you've painted it, you don't necessarily want it, you can always hit Shift and actually sort of smooth that detail out. Okay, so those wrinkles, maybe we don't want them on that particular piece. And so you can always come in and smooth that out. And then we can just use this sculpted detail as a guide of where we're painting. And we know we just want that to be gray. And so we'll just follow that all the way up here. Okay, and then all the way across. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish that part up. So there we go. We've got that painted gray. And if you want to add some variation in there, you can uh, certainly do that. But the main idea is to get your color variation in there. You know, you, you want it to be a dark color, uh, you know, kind of a black. And you could even darken that up a bit more. But to use that uh, color spray will allow you to get a lot of variation in there because you don't just want it to be one single color. You actually want it to be a a subtle variation of a, a lot of different colors. And then breaking it up with those little wrinkles will help get you the kind of uh, texture that we're looking for. And then you can always come in here and modify the actual material. So looking at your material, you know, you can take the diffuse down to kind of darken it up. You could, uh, you know, change the diffuse curve a little bit. Okay, we could take our specular, really increase it, take it down a little. You know, play with the, uh, the specular uh, curve. Okay, broaden that out, tighten it up. Okay, so a lot you can do with the actual material after you've got the uh, poly paint detail uh, painted onto your mesh. Okay, so now that we've got the vest painted and we've got materials added, let's go ahead and move on to the undershirt. So we'll go ahead and do that next.